Uh, we've done hundreds of two hectare plots, We're looking for mainly bilbies and other animals. Yeah, within the areas we look for scats, barrows, um, tracks and record anything that we find. Learned from my mum. My mother used to take me out when I was a child. She taught me, taught me to follow the track. Just one circling. Just out on field, yeah. I teach younger rangers and teach them what I've been taught about tracking. So I'll pass my knowledge down from what I've been taught from my elders, TOs, and how I would like to learn more from working with scientists and pass it down to my younger rangers. Um, so this is a method that developed about 10 years ago and it, it's a blend of indigenous tracking styles with western science. So people go out onto a two hectare plot and they record all the animals that have been on that plot based on what they can see in terms of animal tracks, diggings and scats. The Threatened Species Recovery Hub is working with over 40 partners collecting this this sort of data uh, on a project that stretches across two-thirds of the continent. When we see on a ground, we write it down on an iPad, like this technology stuff. Yeah, I've been learning from my mother, like kind of which track tells you today or yesterday or how long or last week. Got about 60 species uh, that we have already pre-programmed onto our tablet. We originally got into the two hectare plots uh, for bilby surveys but we've found that as a, a general biodiversity tracking method that it's, uh, it works really well. So the, the tracking skills of the rangers that I work with mean that we can um, survey a whole lot of different species at once just by walking around looking at tracks on the ground and then we can work out where we really need to focus our fire management and our cat control. Well our ladies they know the tracks from growing up with the elders and they can tell if a cat's gone through by in the morning or in the evening by just by the, the, the print that they leave behind. But I, I got one grandson and he likes to come out bush with me and he likes to learn we usually go for a trip and when we just pull up anywhere and just walk around and see if any tracks. From there we track put them in a fork room, which is we got the tablet that we market. Uh, it's important for them, young kids to learn and they you know, they are next generation. A lot of our rangers have fantastic tracking skills and the sand plot monitoring gives us a way of harnessing that, those tracking skills and actually turning that into data that tells us about our threatened species distribution. So if you can bring all of that information together into one data set, suddenly you've got this amazingly powerful tool for doing things like mapping distributions of species at a national scale and how that's changing over time. So there's a whole heap of analyses you could do. And we'll also work with groups to help them tweak how they're going about using sand plots so that in the future they can answer those questions uh, more easily. People doing sand tracking monitoring is incredibly important uh, in terms of getting out to country, uh, old people and young people working together. It means that people who haven't been out to country for a while, get back out on country and see what the health of that country is like, what's living there. I, I guess the real beauty with sand plot monitoring is um, it's a very efficient way to collect data on a whole range of species. But the biggest thing is that it's a technique that relies on indigenous tracking skills and it can be used by people who are living on country right across Australia. So one of the things that we hope the project will will really do is showcase the enormous amount of management and monitoring work that people are carrying out across the deserts of Australia.